the scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man this scripture is very powerful. Is in the law you must God. love him more so than ministry. Say, love him more than activities. Is in the law of God. And don't he meditate day Acts and night. chapter 4 and verse 13. He says that that man is like a tree them planted and by them the rivers of water. First. Whose leaves now let's go to Acts 4 and 13 and, and see what happened in there. Every season. This was after As healing you the man listening to this message, at Great you Beauty. That your life now when they saw the boldness like of Peter and John by the rivers and of water, perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant and men, they marveled and your they your took knowledge of them not pass by. that you they forever had seen and you with Jesus. Forever not that they were powerful we and men of God. To not share that they were great so we giants and champions. To subscribe to this channel they had as well as like us Jesus. hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever and content Enoch here is going God. to set you on course at every time it's going know, to make you attain the Bible never whatever stature about his that Christ life, wants you to his attain ministry thank and others. you we may assume that he only walked with God because there was nothing else that mattered in his life. So the Bible takes out time to tell us that he had a grandfather, he had a father, he had a wife, he had children, he had a life, he even had a ministry, yet none of them came close to him. His testimony was not connected to any one of these. And Enoch walked with God in spite of his genealogy in spite of his ability to have prophesied accurately he walked with god you desire the testimony of enoch you must desire to walk with god to walk with god does not mean to neglect anything and everything he has given you but that you exalt him to a point and a position where with respect to him and compared to him absolutely nothing absolutely nothing can take his place we live in a world today and this has been my call for many years and it remains my call to the body of Christ listen to my message what seekest thou we need to return back to a place where we stop using God and using religiosity and spirituality just to get things God is calling us to a deeper relationship that is greater than breakthrough, that is greater than money, that is greater than impartation. God is calling us to himself, not to it. He's calling us deeper, 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 deeper. He's calling us deeper. Deeper, deeper, deeper. Go and sell everything that came through your intellect, through your providing value. Can I tell you, Jesus did not mean he should literally go and sell them. When you sell something, you relinquish ownership. When you sell something, you have parted with it. He's saying, there is, when I look at you, I see that you desire me. But the reason why you have not been able to attain unto perfection is that there are many other things standing side by side with me. Every time I talk to believers, don't tell me you love the Lord. To what extent? Love has levels. We know that. Biology teaches us that. Psychology teaches us that. Love is not generic. There are four indices according to scripture that we use to measure love. Number one is passion. Number two is pleasure. Number three is commitment. Number four is sacrifice. Your love is not complete until these four components are captured in it. In genuine love, there must be passion. In genuine love, there must be commitment. In genuine love, there must be pleasure. And in genuine love, there must be sacrifice. The highest biblical index for measuring love is sacrifice. So when you say, Lord, I love you, he says, show me what you have laid down for me as proof that you love me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Show me what you have laid down 
the testimony of Enoch. When the Bible tells you Enoch walked with God, it means that he exalted God above his wife, above his children, above his prophetic ministry, above everything that represented relevance for him. This was what he was telling the rich man. He says, listen, you want to follow me? Prove to me that you love me and that I mean more to you than all of these things. And Peter now said, we have left everything. Jesus, I was a fisherman. You saw that I left everything to follow you. And he says, don't feel bad. Because can I tell you, when you truly leave everything, you will feel like a fool. If you have not felt like a fool and felt at a loss in following God, you are not yet there. Sacrifice is costly. We have left all to follow you. We have left all. Now we do not have any definition for our lives outside of you. We are just following you and you've not told us anything. I am an adult. I'm a married man with children, Peter must be saying. What is this one that we are following you every day? Where are we going to? And he says, I am more important to you than the assignment. How many people love the assignment more than Jesus? How many people love conferences and conventions more than Jesus? We men of God, how many of us love pulpits, preaching, ministry, healing, anointing, power? We will give up Jesus a thousand times to get power. And Enoch walked with God. I hope you know that you can walk for God and not walk with God. There, are men, there was a parable of the man who was calling people into the vineyard to walk. The basis of their going for many of them was negotiation. They negotiated for a denary. So they did not go to the vineyard because they loved him. They went to the vineyard because they had a contract. There are many contract Christians. Lord, I love you, but I'm giving you two months. I will be a worker. But after two months, if my breakthrough does not come, whatever you see, take it like that. What does it mean and what does it take to walk with God? Walking with God demands total surrender. Write it down. Total surrender. We've dealt with the teachings on the will of God. You can get that. Total surrender. Father, if it is possible, take this cup off me, he said. But nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Listen, until we get to points in our lives where the will of God and his desire becomes bigger than our ambitions and the things that we want and the things that drive our lives, there are levels of intimacy we can never get into. I submit to you that when you begin to walk with God, the first thing he does is to bring you through his word and his spirit to a place and a point in your Christian experience where he begins to dethrone every idol, even if that idol represents something good. It does not have to be evil. Once it is not God, it must go down. Two kings cannot sit on the same throne. Jesus and your intellect. Jesus and your gifts. Jesus and your connections, Jesus and your anointing, Jesus and your preaching prowess, Jesus and your ambition, Jesus and your family. He does not teach to be responsible or to be irresponsible. But he's telling you that compared to Jesus, he must stand in a place and a class all by himself. The Bible says, in the year that King Uzziah died, Isaiah chapter 6, I, Isaiah, saw the Lord. You can't see him until something dies. In the year that King Uzziah died, I now saw the real king sitting on a throne. In the year that my pride died, I saw the Lord. In the year that my loss died, I saw the Lord. In the year that my ambition, my obsession to be great and famous as compared to revealing and glorifying Jesus died, I saw the Lord. 
if you ever covet the testimony of Enoch in your life the question you have to answer is do I love the Lord and there are clear indices if and when you love the Lord the Bible does not leave you in the dark there are proofs that you love the Lord John 14 21 John 14 21 then we'll jump to 23 he that hath my commandments and keepeth them he it is that loveth me and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father and I will love him and manifest myself to him 23 Jesus answered and said unto him if a man love me he will keep my words and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our abode with him first John chapter 2 from verse 15 to 17 first John chapter 2 from verse 15 love not the world aha uh -huh. neither the things that are in the world the word love there comes from the word eros eros an ungodly affinity a passion and a drive for the things of this world that becomes higher than your pursuit of god to love not the world does not mean you will not have the blessings he made all things richly even for us to enjoy but he says love not the world neither the things that are in the world if any man love the world whether you're a preacher whether you're a politician whether you're a businessman it doesn't matter who you are he says the love of the father is not in him then the next verse he categorizes everything that is in the world into three main categories for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not in the father it's not of the father but is of the world verse 17 and the world passeth away and the loss thereof but he that doeth the will of God abides forever Lord I love you I love you he said, mm -mm. love is not an empty word I will have to see for God so loved the world he would have said Lord world I love you while we are suffering but when he loved the world he gave and what he gave was his only can you give your only not your many when you get to a point where you can give your only you love God your only hmm. what does it mean and what does it take to walk with God total surrender total surrender when he says go left left becomes where you go go right right becomes where you go whether it is comfortable or uncomfortable because where he leads you you are willing to go listen if you do not grow to this level you will never attain unto maturity in the spirit there is such an obsession for a Christianity of convenience listen and you know I would I would always teach you the balance the whole counsel of God please hear me no matter what else you learn if your love for God does not supersede the obsession for pleasure and the obsession for convenience you cannot be mighty with God we live in a world where our obsession for convenience is greater than our love and our pursuit for God. When a woman goes to the labor room, you can see the woman crying. In fact, not even the labor room, the entire process of the pregnancy. It is within her power to get tired one day and say, listen, I've made my contribution to this baby. I am tired but it's because she loves the baby more than her condition am i right on that men are saying yes how in the world are we together have you seen what pregnancy does to an average woman it will change everything about her 
oh i want to eat food that has smoke smelling i want to take this and then they bring it and the person say i've, I've changed I, I want something else but in all of that what she's carrying as painful as it is is worth the process most believers complain because your love for jesus is not strong enough to sponsor and provide the staying power whether through storms through rain through whatever it is let me be fair to the man when the man now goes to you know struggle out in life and bring something back home even if he returns back with scars he is happy that his family can feed and just seeing the joy that he's able to meet the needs of those he loves will be more than every embarrassment and every suffering that he went through can i tell you every time jesus becomes a luggage and a load check what else has taken his place every time the pursuit of the faith life becomes an inconvenience coming to the house of god loving jesus prayer fasting the word of god corporate fellowship the moment it becomes a burden i want you to check something is wrong because every time you know the absence of passion by the emergence of excuses the absence of passion is characterized by the sudden emergence of excuses the moment there is no passion and there is no drive you will have excuses i'm busy you will have excuses don't forget what i'm telling you you can test the absence of passion by the sudden emergence of excuses i'm busy i just got a promotion and i need to hurry up so you can pray you can fast you can study the word of god you can spend time with him something is wrong with your love life is someone learning the bible took out time to tell us the family life and other involvements of enoch so that there is no excuse the bible never records that he was an irresponsible father the bible never records that he was an irresponsible husband the bible never says he was a fake prophet you know a bit about prophecy and you know it takes a lot with god to command that level of accuracy to speak about the coming of christ when the dispensation was just beginning what level of depth and heights did he touch and yet in spite of the earthly responsibilities the bible says enoch still walked with god that means your job is not an excuse is someone hearing now that means your marriage is not an excuse that means the presence of the children is not an excuse the ministry enlargement is not an excuse kill those excuses tonight and say lord i return back to the place of the altar all of the excuses i have given flimsy excuses they may look justifiable but enoch cancels all our excuses if you use family life as an excuse enoch was a family man if you use ministry as an excuse enoch was a mighty prophet if you use old age as an excuse enoch was a very old man and yet he walked with god if you say it's because i'm giving my children all the time that's why i cannot walk with god what greater heritage to birth children and then one son who was the longest living man on earth enoch someone say no excuses prophesy to yourself say no excuses hmm. you will always have time for what you love as much as people say they are busy if you hear right now that they are sharing one one million somewhere in guagualada this night and by six o'clock it will stop energy and fire and passion and determination and zest oh bold bold stops work by 12 midnight stories you will find a way of calling a destiny helper call it even if the person says i'm charging you hundred thousand you say no problem let's go i will give you if i go back with nine hundred thousand is still profit for where your treasure is where your treasure is beloved people don't just laugh where your treasure is 
that is where your heart will be where your treasure is if your if your treasure is your job your heart will be there if your treasure is ministry I will keep saying it for as long as I live that there is nothing there is no one there is no activity upon this earth that sustains the ability to take his place in my life I will close this ministry a thousand times and beg you with tears in my eyes and say I didn't do it because I hate you it's because I love him Abraham take now thy son thine only son whom thou lovest and offer him upon a mount that I will show you the Bible says Abraham arose early in the morning and carried Isaac to go and kill him is he would have given one of the servants and said just go and kill him for me I will tell God he is dead but to kill him by yourself my call tonight from the life of Enoch is for everyone under the sound of my voice and those who are watching to return back to the place of intimacy with the Lord you are the one that we praise you are the one we adore you give the healing and grace that are Hearts always hunger for, oh, hearts always hunger for. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace that our hearts always hunger. And Enoch walked with God. And Joshua Selman walked with God. And this businessman walked with God. And this preacher and this father. Listen to me. There are many men today who were very spiritual before they got married and had children. When they see spiritual people or see spiritual platforms, they run away because it reminds them of their yesterday. There are people who probably years ago on campus were on fire and they loved the Lord. And they decided to use growth and age to graduate out of the school of the spirit. There are many people who love God because they had responsibilities in church. You are a deacon you are a pastor so you must be there for the morning prayer the moment you take away those titles it also goes with the fire how many homes today do not pray how many homes today do not fast how many homes today there is no system of spiritual growth the man is up and doing looking for money the woman is up and doing carrying stories from place to place everybody is going from pillar to post the children are becoming like lucifer within the house please hear me walking with god is greater than walking with the government walking with god is greater than walking with shell and nmpc walking with god is greater than walking with any institution on earth may god grant you grace to work with all those desired institutions but in addition you must get to a point where you great working with god is greater than working in a ministry you give the healing and grace that my Heart always Oh, my heart always The average believer has not cultivated intimacy with the Holy Spirit. It is the reason why today our pain and everything that worries us goes to social media. Our pain and everything that worries us goes to people around because we have not known how to draw comfort from his presence 
those who really walk with God have known the value of his presence his presence is where we come and cry Jesus at when he was preparing to go to the cross he knew the burden of what was on him he went to the place of prayer and said father oh there is a place that we can cry there is a place where you can empty yourself most of where we are going to is the wrong place his presence where you can open up your heart and cry out your heart to the king of kings and the lord of lords some of you what god should do for you you are hoping friends will do it what god should do for you you are hoping social media will do it attracting sympathy from the whole world what you what god should do for you is what you think money would. listen let me tell you this the greatest of anything will fail you return back to his presence that is the place where you can cry and you know you are safe that is the place where you can roll before him and i'm not here to complain about my many struggles but by your spirit and your grace I'm confident you'll solve them But I'm here to say I love you I'm here to say I adore you I'm here to say From the bottom of my heart, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. From the bottom of my heart, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. From the bottom of my heart, yes, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. From the bottom. Let me show you a lover's declaration. It says, Oh God, you are my God. Psalm 63. Oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. Give it to us, please, media. My soul thirsted for you. My flesh longed for thee. In a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Verse 2. To see your power and your glory as I have seen in the sanctuary. Verse 3. Because your loving kindness is better than life. We wait on you. Lord, we wait on you. We wait on you. Lord, we wait on you. I wait on you. Lord, I wait on you. I wait on you. Lord, I wait on you. Can I tell you this? For many of us, you know what is your God by how frequent you run to it. So the uncle that you are always disturbing for your lifting, listen carefully, you know who and what is your God by the frequency of your visitation. Hmm. Every five minutes you are on social media, searching who will, when he says, come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden afterwards you run from pillar to post ah. am i wasting your time return to him oh you are god alone from before time began you are on your throne you are god alone 
You are God alone from before time began. You are on your throne. You are God alone. You are God alone. You are God alone from before time began. To love him above and beyond everything he says what shall separate us from the love of God what shall separate us from the love of God and he begins to list all kinds of things he say nay in all these things we are more than conquerors the Bible says no eye has seen no ear has heard neither has it entered the heart of any man what God has in store not for prayer warriors not for fasting giants not for preachers not for eloquent people not for business people but for them that love him them that love him them that love him please hear me for someone God is calling you and he's saying I am still waiting where you left me five years ago I am still waiting man of God I'm still waiting where I was with you before invitation started coming I'm still there waiting patiently would you return back to me I am still waiting you cried and cried and cried and cried when you had no job I'm still waiting where you received your employment later Please take this as the voice of God tonight because if we don't pray for our generation this level of lukewarmness we keep marketing and giving flimsy excuses is not about fanatism it's about passion and desire don't care don't tell me you are a preacher don't tell me you are a businessman you are a deacon you are an apostle that is none of my business simon bajona lovest thou me more than this lovest thou me more than fame lovest thou me more than ministerial exploits lovest thou me more than ministry titles lovest thou me more than money can I tell you this? If you fail in everything in life, but not in loving Jesus, you did not fail. If you win in every other thing in life and fail in your love life, oh dear, you failed. You failed. Do you know why most of our children today do not love God? Because the depth of passion they see comes from their parents. And so if they see a father and a mother and leaders who are not serious about God giving flimsy excuses, that becomes their templates too. When a child sees his father rolling before God every day, Lord, there is nothing I have and there is nothing I am except you. One day that child will come and roll with you too, even if he does not know what you are doing. Listen, let me tell you, we may not understand what you are doing now till the next 10, 15 years. There will rise a generation that will not honor God. May God forbid it. I say it again. May God forbid it. Let it not be that it is in our lifetime. We will see shrines return back to homes. Not just villages, oh, homes. Can I tell you this? For some of you, you need to suspend ministry activities for a while and go back to the altar this this deception of invitations and open door can dry you spiritually oh i'm doing ministry exploits i'm traveling from nation to nation isaiah was doing ministry when there was a call in heaven who shall go for us whereas on earth there was ministry going on all kinds of things when people clap and say joshua selman you are busy you go from place to place i just smile and respectfully say god bless you when i return back with god i say i reject deception oh god i your boy is here from where you found me may i ever remain there ministry nonsense right from the place of his presence he can honor you to bless the nations 
but see satan will give you ministry open doors a thousand times if it will cost you his presence oh with jesus joy he will open doors for you not every open door is anointed i've told you this thing there are doors you have to shut intentionally please return return i don't know who i'm speaking to but the holy spirit is speaking to someone return return i'm not condemning you but return god is saying i am still waiting return to the place of the altar the place of fire the place of power return to the place of his presence he called them that they would be with him and then represent him I'd rather be called a failure as a man of God and yet succeed and win with God than to have the accolades of men across the nations and then you do not carry any weight with God. Someone pray right where you are. Father, grace to return. Please, someone pray. Pray. Grace to return. Grace to return. Grace to return, oh God. Mm. Pray one minute. More love, more power, more of you in my life. More love. More power, more of you in my life. Please pray one minute. More love, more power, more of you in my life. More More power, more of you in my life. In the name of Jesus. Question two. The second question we have to ask and answer tonight, and then we're done. What does it mean and what does it take to please God? Remember the first question. What does it mean? And what does it take to walk with God? We said it means to love him and to prioritize him above and beyond anything this world can offer, including your own life. It means to get to a point and a state of total surrender. Now we are asking and attempting to answer the second question. What does it mean and what does it take to please God? John chapter 1 from verse 6 to seven let me tell you what it means to please God there was a man sent from God whose name was John who sent him everybody please look up if I send you to go and do something for me what then becomes my joy is it not in your doing and fulfilling what I have sent you to do? Is that true? When you return back to me and say, Sir, I have done this. In the parable of the talents, Matthew 26, don't turn there, just write for reference. The Bible says he gave unto one five talents, two and one, and then he left. The one with five went and did business and multiplied it to ten. The one with two to four and when he returned he used a statement that showed he was pleased well done good and faithful servant is that true for the last one who did not do anything he was roaming around complaining and even buried his talent he says i know you are a hard man you like to reap where you did not sow so i thought instead of wasting this let me just bury it here is your talent and he called him a wicked and unprofitable servant what does it take and what does it mean to please God? Let's finish the scripture. John 1, 6. There was a man sent from God. That man was you 
and verse 7 the bible says the same came for a witness say witness to bear witness of the light that all men through his witness might believe right here i have taught you this is the corporate mandate of every believer it does not matter whether you are a businessman a man of god on the pulpit a politician captain of industry whatever it is our corporate mandate in this kingdom spiritual growth 101 you have once you know god and you want to understand his ways you must come to this and realize that our corporate mandate is the call to be witnesses a witness is the validator of god's claim there is no greater way to give god joy than to bear witness to the light it says that all men through that witness might be saved john chapter 4 and verse 34 john 4 34 jesus said unto them when he walked upon the earth my meat that means my satisfaction is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work is that in your bible when you read the prophecy of enoch in jude 1 from verse 14 jude was i mean enoch was calling his then generation to return back to the place of righteousness to return back to the place where they would acknowledge the god of heaven he called them and said beware he's coming with a cloud and he's coming to judge this and that and to call them back this was what john did john was that voice crying in the wilderness and calling the people to repent and for a long time he did it well except that bitterness and offense got into him and he veered off into something else and he paid for it by dying cheaply daniel chapter 12 and verse 3 daniel chapter 12 let's read it together please are you ready one to read and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever they that turn many not few to righteousness i can tell you what it takes to please god more than studying your bible more than just preaching when you are actively involved in being a witness and you use everything god has given you your beauty your talent your anointing every resource god has given you you use it to represent him and to lift up that banner of light and righteousness across the nations making your contribution towards kingdom come that is a life that pleases god that was the testimony of Enoch. The testimony of Enoch was not the accuracy of his prophecy. Unfortunately, these are the credentials we use today as men of God. These are the credentials we use today as business people. I am an accurate prophet. I am a great apostle. I am a wonderful pastor. Those things are wonderful. But if you covet the testimony of Enoch, the testimony of Enoch is not the life of a preacher the testimony of enoch is not the accuracy of a prophet the testimony of enoch is not a man who understands economic systems to amass so much wealth the testimony of enoch is a life that utilizes the time given and all the resources within your advantage to become the light when you become the light indeed you become one who pleases the father jesus had the same testimony as enoch he said this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased please hear me believers may i recommend again to everyone and our global family watching please go back and listen to my birthday broadcast if you can listen to it please listen to it I taught on some things that I want you to listen to. It will help to align your mind even towards this season, to align with what God is doing. One of the things that I taught is the power of purpose. I said, nothing in itself is valuable and profitable until it is connected to purpose. 
Now, the challenge with the body of Christ is we teach spiritual truths in isolation to being a witness and in isolation to kingdom come. Any truth you teach in isolation to and with God's agenda becomes self-destructive even though it is the truth. So if I teach you prosperity, I teach you principles and believe me under this ministry you will learn everything when i'm teaching the series on prosperity i will teach it as if i don't teach any other thing else when i'm teaching on deliverance i will teach it i give my heart and my all because it is my job by god to see that you are holistically built but can i tell you nothing in itself profits you until it is connected to that agenda of being a witness and that agenda of kingdom come now you can learn about power because it is connected to your witness now you can learn about prosperity and not feel apologetic for it you can be reading a book on prosperity and you can confess i am a kingdom billionaire not from a carnal man's lustful communication but one who understands the role that that money will play in making you an effective witness and in making the kingdom come project a reality. Listen, I can summarize Christianity for you within a few sentences. The entire faith life is not complicated. Step one, Jesus and everything about him. The real journey for the believer starts with his encounter with Jesus. And that comes by hearing the message of the gospel that saves. And then at the point of salvation, you are now introduced to the personality of the Holy Spirit alongside the word of God. Your journey into the kingdom experience now begins. At your encounter with the Holy Spirit and the word of God, then you are given the privilege of being connected to human vessels who will now work in partnership with the word and the spirit to begin that job of methodical mentorship and growth in your life when you get to a point where you are gaining understanding and that mentorship has to be methodical teaching you the truths of the kingdom line upon line precept upon precept you get to a point where you attain a stage of commendable maturity now you are taught not only who you are and your rights we now introduce the kingdom concept to let you know that god has a responsibility over you the purpose for all the blessings the long life is that you are able to be an effective witness can i tell you only when you know your assignment as a witness and you understand the purpose behind everything God gives you, now your prayer and your wanting things will make sense. Oh, in the name of Jesus, I will never be poor. I agree with you, but to what end? I came from a background, I've suffered. I want to enjoy my life before I die. That is not a wise man's approach. I desire this wealth because based on the blueprint of the mandates given to me, I understand that kingdom financing has a, an, a major role to play in kingdom come. And since God has called me to play that role with Jesus' joy, and he will send you resources beyond your wildest imagination because there is purpose connected to it. Please hear me, believers. We have to repent and manage our blind passion for things that are not connected to God's divine program, it will always lead us to destruction. Hallelujah. Before he said, give us this day our daily bread, the prayer before it is, thy kingdom come and thy will be done. It is with respect to the kingdom, he says, give us our daily bread. It is with respect to the kingdom that he said, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who trespass against us. It is with respect to the kingdom that he says, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Everything was connected to our being a witness. And Enoch had this testimony that he pleased God. How did he please God? By becoming a light to his generation. A beacon that can draw men to righteousness. Can I tell you? You must spend your life making an active contribution with your life and your resources. Whether as a preacher, as a whatever it is, the geography of your witness I would always teach. Everything you have within you must work together to see Jesus glorified, to see Jesus revealed. This is true. 
until and unless you get to that point believe me you may be a believer but you are not pleasing the Lord apostle how about the offering I gave the other time before your offering becomes acceptable we will have to vet what motivated it if it's just transaction because you are giving and you were told that money will come back well you may just get God to honor you mercifully because you are doing your best with what you know but that you understand that my life should count as far as being a witness is concerned you don't have to be behind the pulpit to be a witness our school of ministry students have invited us to come for their program and we'll come and watch them teach us what it means to be witnesses everybody say I am a witness one more time prophesied say I am a witness that means I am a validator of the claims of God yes as a man of God you are beyond a preacher you are a witness the testimony of Enoch I made up my mind that at the end of my life is if Christ tarries I sincerely don't want to be known just for being a great preacher a miracle worker great leader thank God for all of these things but if there is any testimony I covet in my life it is this right here the testimony of Enoch and Joshua Selman walked with God and he had a testimony that he pleased God if all I have is Jesus I've got something more than gold and I will tell it to my world Jesus is more than gold if all I do is Jesus I've got something more than gold I will tell it to my world Jesus is more than we used to sing a song before I pledge allegiance to the don't sing it if you don't believe it with all my heart with all I am I will see to honor his coming. I pledge allegiance to the land. Some of you, these are the songs you sang when you got born again. These are the songs you sang when you were serious with God before something else came to distract you you've had my message please return he's still waiting you see the beautiful thing with Jesus is that for as long as you are ready to return his arms are wide open to receive you again the prodigal son said how many hired servants does my father have and I am here feeding with the swine he says I will arise and I will go to my father and I will say father I have sinned against you and against heaven I am not worthy to be called your son take me as one of your servants the Bible says as he got up and was moving while he was afar off he saw his father and the father came and embraced him and kissed him put that garment of royalty upon him and restored the signet ring this is not about fanatism this is not about irrational pursuit that brings imbalance and destroys every area of your life this is reordering your life in a way that makes you excel holistically there are many people who in a bid to show that they love Jesus Christ they become so fanatic in an imbalanced way that their life overall looks miserable it is not an attractive template of a witness can I tell you you will never give him all and become an entity he will reorder your life and make sure the other things you have left for him will return to you with honor and with dignity my life is a testimony Emmanuel Jesus Christ 
You never let me go. My shepherd king, you're watching over me. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Jesus Christ. You never let me go. My shepherd king, you're watching over me. Emmanuel. God with us. Hallelujah. Listen, beloved people, I brought you this message from the throne. There are many testimonies you desire in your life. Like the testimony of a celebrity, nothing wrong with it. The testimony of an entrepreneur who started from nothing and became the greatest voice within his territory. Noble testimony. The testimony of a great and responsible father. Noble testimony. The testimony of a diligent person who pushed through all the limitations to become great. Noble testimony. The testimony of one who fought his way from idolatry to encounter Jesus. Noble testimony. But tonight's teaching is a call to embrace the noblest testimony that anyone can have. It is called the testimony of Enoch. And Enoch, the seventh man from creation, from Adam, walked with God and he had this testimony. Hebrews 11 and verse 5. That he pleased God. That's it. As busy as we are, if all that we are doing is not pleasing God, I assure you we are wasting our time and wasting the gift of time God gave us. You notice I've been singing a particular song. I will sing it one more time again. Please allow me to sing it. Worship team, you listen to me. This one is a message, not a special number. As I sing it, I want you to listen. When it's all been said and done All my treasures will mean nothing Only what I've done for love's reward Will stand the test of time When it's all been said and done There is just one thing that matters did I do my best to live for truth? Did I live my life for you? Lord, your mercy is so great That you look beyond our weakness And find precious joy in married clay Turning sinners into saints and I will always sing your praise Here on earth and ever after For you've shown me heaven's my true home When it's all been said and done You're my life when life Lord, your mercy is so great That you look beyond our weakness And find precious joy in married clay Turning sinners into saints Kominanakane Kominanakane Call me na na kane, ya Jesus. Call me na na kane, Yeshua Hamashiach. Call me na na kane, Yeshua Hamashiach. Call me na na kane, call me na na kane, ya Jesus. Call me na na kane. Call me na na kane. Call 
Komi na na kane Yeshua Hamashiach Komi na na kane Yeshua Hamashiach Komi na na kane One more time Komi na na kane Komi na na kane Komi na na Komi na na kane Komi na na kane Shua Shua All about you, Jesus, and all this is for you. It's for your glory and your fame. It's not about me, as if you should do things my way. You alone are God. And I surrender. I'll sing it one more time and we'll pray. It's all about you, Jesus. And all this is for you. It's for your glory and your fame. It's not about me. As if you should do things my way. You alone are God, and I surrender. We're going to pray, but without wasting time, let me make the altar call right away. Right away. I don't know what else to tell you. If you are here, and on hearing everything I have said, you know that you need Jesus whether in the main auditorium, all the overflows outside following online. There's no point cajoling and plaguing with your psychology. This is an issue of life and death. There has to be somebody here saying, I covet the testimony of Enoch. That I have searched and searched all the earth, searched and searched all the earth, and found that Babuani Kamaraka. I have searched and searched all the earth, searched and searched all the earth, and found that Babuani Kamaraka. You will search and search all the earth. You will search and search over the earth, and you will find that Babuani Kamaraka. We have searched and searched all the earth, searched and searched all the earth, and found that Babuani Kamaraka. Babu wani kamaruka Babu wani kamaruka Ya Yesu Babu wani kamaruka Please if you are coming I like you to run like there's fire on the mountain come and stand before Jesus Finally I found the key to peace I found the key to grace whether you are a man of God, whether you are a businessman, it does not matter. Come to Jesus. He's calling you. Apostle, I remember giving my life to Jesus, 
but things have gone haywire can i come please join them join them quickly we have searched and searched all the earth searched and searched all the earth and we have found that listen let me tell you the truth an altar call you see an altar is a place of transference and exchange an altar is also a place of authorization so when you come to the altar you are coming to the place where your weaknesses and your limitations are exchanged for his strength it says let us therefore come boldly boldly to the throne of grace please if you are coming rush i'm about to pray now you cannot imagine how it gladdens my heart when i see people run to jesus it is not because i'm a preacher believe me this pleases the father and enoch walked with god if enoch were a preacher in our days he would cry like john the baptist in the wilderness prepare ye the way of the lord he may enoch has been translated but God has kept some of us, me and you, to continue that ministry. Though we are few, we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before. And this is the song we'll be singing forever. Holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. Please lift your right hand high above your head. Unashamedly, you are standing before the lover of your soul. Men can condemn you, men can talk about you, but here you are in the presence of one who loved you and gave himself for you. I don't care what you have done or not done. I don't care what has worked or not worked. When you come to Jesus, you come as you are and then you trust his saving power please say this after me loud and clear from the depth of your heart you are talking to jesus who is in our midst here those outside all the overflows please make sure you pray this from the depth of your heart and for someone who might be watching by way of television or internet and you may be in your room your office you're sitting on your sofa and you are saying can jesus meet me at that point yes sir where can we hide from his presence so as i lead god's people to pray make sure you pray and let it be from the depth of your heart lift your right hand high above your head as a sign of surrender say after me lord jesus tonight i have heard your word i desire to love you i desire to walk with you and i desire to please you right now i repent of my sins and i confess that Jesus is my savior, the one who died for me. Jesus is my Lord and Jesus is my King. I declare that the power of sin, of Satan, of hell and of the grave is broken over my life. From tonight, I declare that I am a child of God, washed by the blood of the lamb. I declare that I go forward ever and backward never in Jesus name keep your hands lifted and I pray for you father thank you it is always a joy to watch people come before the cross and Lord you have drawn these ones even by your spirit I declare by the authority of scripture that their sins are forgiven and in the name of Jesus the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over your life from tonight you walk in the newness of life I call you the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus you go forward ever and backward never for in Jesus name we pray for in Jesus name we pray amen and amen now very quickly let me encourage you please I'd like you to move to my right there are counselors waving their hands to lovingly receive you have a word for you and then you quickly return back to your seat let's honor them as they go very quickly let's honor them as they go hallelujah 
Is that the best you can do, Koinonia? Hallelujah. Please rise up on your feet and let's pray. We always end our teaching sessions with a moment and a time of prayer. Hallelujah. We have just two or three prayer points tonight and then we're done for this service. Prayer point number one. Take over. Take over. I have come to the end of myself. Take over, Jehovah, I have touched the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah, I have come to the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah, I have touched the end of myself. Father, I lay aside every weight and the sin that does easily beset me and i run with perseverance the race that is set before me looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of my faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross and despised the shame please lift your voice and pray father everything that has stolen your place in my life let there be that reordering reordering be exalted be exalted be lifted above fame above ministry above my pursuit for resources someone is praying be lifted be lifted be lifted i exalt you someone is praying i came to church tonight and i have been taught that there is a nobler pursuit to walk with God and to please God captured in the testimony of Enoch I desire to walk with you I desire to love you I desire to serve you if someone pray I lay aside every weight the sin that doth easily beset me inside outside are you praying hallelujah hallelujah when isaiah saw the lord he was broken and even though he was a great prophet he cried and he said woe is me i am undone i am a man of unclean lips and i live among a people of unclean lips for my eyes have seen the king the lamb upon the throne who reigns forevermore that was isaiah's prayer prayer point number two lord whatever it takes to walk with you throughout my lifetime make it available for me the engracing someone pray please help those under the anointing someone pray whatever it will take the resources the consecration the passion the drive the discipline i obtain in the name of jesus christ I obtain in the name of Jesus hallelujah final prayer point Hebrews 11 and verse 5 one of the patriarchs that the Bible says we should follow he was translated so that he would not see death and was not found because God had translated him for before his transition translation he had this testimony that he pleased god 
someone pray let my life capture the testimony of Enoch that I am a father pleaser I am a God pleaser not just a God chaser not just a God worshiper I am a God pleaser that my entire life will be a witness someone pray my life will be a beacon of light even in this dark world a light in business a light in ministry a light to the nations that gentiles will come to my light and even their kings to the brightness of my rising someone pray whatever it takes to be a god pleaser prosperity health influence grace speed restoration testimonies whatever it would take for my life to please the father results i obtain in the name of jesus hallelujah must i go an empty hand must i meet my savior so not one so with which to greet him must i empty handed go we used to sing these hymns in the seminary it didn't make sense to us those days the hymn was too long we wanted them to cut the stanza first and last so we'll go and eat but now we can discern the richness that is in that to bring joy that you will stand before Jesus having spent your life and you will watch many people around you pastor you will watch many people businessman and they will say I am alive that was changed thank you forgiving to the Lord I am so glad you came there was a ministry sent from God the name was koinonia the same came to bear witness of the light not to build empires not to exalt a man in the name of Jew or president or whatever it is sent from God to spend our life let me remind you whether you like it or not someday I will keep saying it till it enters your spirit this life will be wrapped up and rolled like a curtain whether we like it or not he says teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom for some of you God is calling you to fade away a life of foolishness and time wastage it's time to begin to walk circumspect as wise and not as unwise redeeming the time because in truth the days are evil may it be that when he comes or when we meet him that we will truly truly stand tall and proud not just that we gave our lives to him but we spent our lives being witnesses till he returns or calls me home here in the love of christ one more time till he returns or calls me home here in the love I release grace upon you to love the Lord may you desire him from the depth of my heart the Lord who has shown me mercy and helped me to know him and love him may that passion rest upon you the grace to love him beyond any material thing in this life receive that grace right now the grace to walk with him receive that grace the grace to live for him receive that grace the grace to be an effective witness receive that grace the grace to please him receive that grace 
for in the name of Jesus Christ we pray give Jesus a big hand clap Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially, and otherwise. I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain.